full-time fly fishing guide now for four and a half years. Uh, started guiding in Africa and uh, soon from that moved to uh, the Indian Ocean and um, also Russia in the in the uh, few recent years. My name is Jaku Lucas. Um, I've been guiding in the Seychelles now for about 10 years um, and uh, and still every single moment, just love every single moment of it. Um, I also guide other places in the world around Norway, Mongolia and uh, all other places in Africa for tiger fish in the Zambezi River. Okay, my name is Ed Somson. Um, I have uh, I work in guiding uh, 15, 15 years and um, I guide on Alphonse. Asto and Cosmolido. My name is Cameron Musgrave. I've uh, been guiding in the Seychelles probably around what's well, coming up to six years. Um, I've been fortunate enough to see several islands out here. There's a lot of things about this place that's that's a, that's a standout and which make what makes it really special. Um, the one thing for me. Um, and I think for most people coming here is the amount of teeth you, uh, you get to see and fish to. Um, apart from all the other species, the trigger fish, uh, which is also an epic fish. Um, and then obviously you get the, the really nice sized bones on the outside, um, as well as the, the, the crazy numbers of fish uh, inside the lagoon, which is, which is always good fun. Um, what we're doing here is just something that that very few people get to experience and, and we just love every minute of it. I mean, we've got GTs running wild here. Um, we've got the wall of a stove. It's literally something right out of our doorstep where you would walk 100 meters down the flat and you've got a sheer, a sheer drop of about two kilometers, which is, um, which is just amazing. If you look down the wall, it's just teeming with life. It's just got all sorts of little fish, um, little trigger fish, uh, all sorts of uh, blood snappers, groupers, uh, we saw some permit on the on the on the drop. When guests ask me, you know, what's the wall about? The best way for me to try and explain it is, is if you're standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon and, and, and looking down, um, it's it's that's how severe and 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 the sheer drop of the of the wall is. Being a very passionate free diver, um, I like to go snorkeling a couple of times uh, during the week, and it's it's absolutely incredible seeing the life. At the wall, and um, from the smallest of fish to the to the biggest of predators, um, sort of capitalizing on the on the on the area, it's it's quite special. One thing about one thing about these destinations and why people could travel all the all around the world from um, is is um, just these GTs and how aggressive um, these fish are towards the fly. I mean, um, for people to see a GT, and as I I mean, a few years back I described them as the gangsters of the flat, and I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. There's no other better way to experience it. I mean, these pieces, these fish are just running around the flats, just destroying everything. Their life will change in the next uh, in the next few minutes or next few moments. As soon as as soon as the fly hits uh, hits the water, it's it's game on, and, and it's just uh, it's like a lion trying to eat a gazelle. It's awesome to see a client um, just see a GT eat his fly for the first time. It's it's something that they could never be prepared for. It's something that just rocks their world and 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 we love every minute of it, just seeing the expression of the clients. I mean, most of the time it doesn't end the way you want it to end with him making a perfect cast, getting stuck into the GT and it running off and you landing the fish. I mean, that's a perfect world. Uh, most of the time the chaos just goes so wild that you, uh, you more than likely don't see that first fish. They can shoot sort of 10 meters in, in a split second and usually before, you, before, before the guest is ready, fish is already on the fly and um, it's a bit of chaos. Um, uh, usually on the flat when, when the jeets uh, eat the fly and uh, lines wrapping around people, um, the hook set is always, <laughs> always funny and uh, rod lifts. Um, most of the time the guests uh, sort of forget what they need to do and uh, but but luckily the, the jeets are and most often they're not hooked themselves so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good fun. Uh. We describe it as the jewel of the Indian Ocean and um, the, the kind of stuff that we've, we've experienced this season again is something that nobody will ever experience on another kind of fishery. I mean we had Christian this season landing a double a double permit which is something I've, I've dreamt of. I mean I still made a joke and I said sort of yeah let's go out and catch two permits uh, in, the, in the day and a high and um, before we knew it, we walked sort of to the lagoon, a short little little walk, and uh, 10 minutes later, uh, both my guests had a, had a permit on the end of the line, and uh, it's one of those 
very nervous situations for a guide uh, tailing these fish. Uh, luckily I had a net with me and uh, we managed to get both fish in. To land a double permit is, is literally like seeing a unicorn. I mean it's it's something that that I don't think will be repeated very easily and if it will be it will be at this location because we've just got a really sort of a sweet spot when it comes to, to permit fishing at this, uh, this location and then obviously I started my season off on a peak. Um, first day went out um, towards the, the, the entrance of the lagoon. We moved up up around towards the channel and um, and then just proceeded to hit one big fish after another. I mean, we landed 18 GTs for the day, which eight of them were over a meter. Um, they were, I mean, I can literally recall exactly the size of them. One was, the biggest one was 124 centimeters. We had a 119 centimeters, 118 centimeters, 111, 110, 109, 107, and 104 centimeter fish. I mean, it was just, something that uh, any guy just dreams of and uh, I'll definitely never forget that day. I mean, another unique thing about Astov is that it's got a it's got a, a lagoon, but but lagoon like no other. It, it is home to an ar an arrangement of fish, um, but in particular bonefish. There are there are thousands of bonefish in the in in, in the lagoon. But yeah, overall, it's a, it's just a super special place. It's a small island, and we've gotten we've gotten to know it really well in the last sort of ten weeks. Um, we've got a strong guide team here. Just everyone's uh, sort of just uh, enjoying this this place to the full. So um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a great season, and I, I would um, I'm looking forward to coming back here again. And um, yeah, it's been great.